all right welcome back to the channel so i'm going to answer another question from a subscriber before we get into this if you haven't yet hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so you can be notified when i put out a video if you find this information useful or if you just want to help out the channel hit the like button if you don't like the information hit the dislike button leave a comment to share any kind of added information because i'm not the end all be all of information and all of you that are out here and involved in this industry, you guys can be helping these people just as well as I can. You don't want to do videos? Just put your comments down in the comment section and help people out. All right, with that being said, let's get into it. also got to be strong in this industry as in any other industry the question is what is the best way to go about buying a van how much should somebody spend on a van should it be used with 80 or 90 thousand miles should it be newer and do it through financing is it better to buy an older vehicle with low miles and save money on the total cost of the vehicle give me some insight now i'm always looking for a van I'm currently, I've been looking for vans. It's just the market has been very bad at this moment. That's the first and foremost thing to say is right now, the buying market for vans is just crap. Absolute crap. They're overpriced and they're very hard to find right now. Uh, even ordering vans is limited. I ordered a van recently uh, and then I ordered a couple of more through for the company and i was being told that the ordering has been stopped at this moment with this is with ford now i'm not sure what's going on with mercedes for sure i'm a ford transit guy just because that's what i have that's what i know so that's what i choose to stick with so first and foremost that's my preference and that's the biggest reason why uh i won't now as far as what i'm looking for okay me personally with all these things you know, should it be new? Should it be used? Should it be a certain mileage? Anything like that. The biggest thing is just finding the best deal. Okay. Me personally, I know the Ford Transit and I know the issue. So for one, I know which type of Ford Transit I want and I know which engine I want. So that's the first thing I'm looking for is the particular engine, which is a 3.5 turbo. Now with that being said, now I'm looking for the best value whether it be used, whether it be brand new, it doesn't really matter to me personally which one it is. I don't have a problem financing it. I don't have a problem, you know, with whether somebody paid cash out for it. Obviously, if you have the cash and you don't have a payment, you know, that's depending on what mindset you have on that because recently this kind of sidetracked a little bit, but recently I've seen some uh, videos where people are telling you that you should use credit that you should use things that are on payment because why use your own cash money that you have? Why take that out? So is there is there some legitimacy to that? I'm not sure. I haven't really looked into that enough, but that is one mindset to, to have on it. But me personally, I, I pretty much finance anything, uh, everything I've gotten so far. And as far as, like I've also looked for regular size cargo vans as far as an E350 specifically. Again, I'm a Ford guy, that's my experience. Those are the vans I know, the issues to look for, things like that, so that I can help not get ripped off on a used vehicle if I choose to buy a used vehicle. And, you know, one of the things about buying a used vehicle, if I can find a Transit that's got less than 60,000 miles on it and the price is right, I'm willing to do that because you still have a little warranty left. Uh, the factory warranty on those, I believe, are 65, 66,000 miles, somewhere in that range. Uh, somebody correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. Uh, and at that point, as long as you're still under that manufacturer's warranty, you can purchase an extended warranty. With my experience with the vans, I'm not interested in buying the extended warranties. I think they're a waste of money because uh, so far in my experience with the transits, I haven't really had any use for warranty work within that first hundred and some odd thousand miles that you're going to be using it. But if you're buying used, and you're not sure how those vans act, it might be worth it if they're not trying to completely rip your mouth out with it. So, 
Uh, that's one thing to look at is the mileage uh, based on whether you want to get warranty, whether that makes you feel more secure having a warranty. If it does, by all means, purchase it. Uh, and look for a van that's under 60,000 miles under the factory warranty so that if you get something that you overlooked and a uh, light goes on when you're driving at home, okay, it's under warranty. You can go get it taken care of. And, and hopefully it won't come out of your pocket. Hopefully it be something that's covered under the factory, which usually everything is. Now, how new the van is, that's going to depend on the carrier slash company that you're choosing to sign on with. So, first and foremost, you do need to have an idea where you plan to put your van on in order to get to work. Are you going to go independent? If you're going to go independent, get your own MC and DOT number. Obviously, it doesn't matter how old the vehicle is because it's, it's your vehicle. You're the one that, you know, sets the requirements for how old the vehicle is. Uh, if you're going to sign on with the company, then you need to find out what their requirements are. Is it five years or newer, three years or newer? Do they not have any kind of uh, uh, year limit on it? If that's the case, then, you know, obviously you can, that, that's going to answer the question on how old or new it should be. Uh, as far as a preference, I mean, obviously, if you've got the means, buying a brand new van, obviously the best thing, because it's brand new, okay? Uh, you know you're not going to have any issues if you are. It's under warranty, all that good stuff. So you just don't want to be paying too much to get that brand new vehicle. That's the thing. So uh, that's one of the things that's going to determine whether or not you can afford a van is, you know, your credit. You know, what kind of uh, income history do you have? You know, what's your credit looking like uh, currently? Is it going to overextend you? Uh, also... Make sure that you check into what insurance is going to cost you. Say you're looking at a brand new van. You're looking at a 2023. Okay, you have an idea what van you want. Get in touch with the uh, commercial insurance. Progressive is who I use. Uh, that, that's who I use. Get in touch with them. Get the VIN number of the van, the style van you're looking at. Give them the VIN number, and they'll be able to give you an idea what your insurance is going to cost you. So that way you'll have your insurance costs taken care of and then you can kind of you should be able to get an idea what your payment's going to be there's payment calculators out there there's you know all that good stuff so you can get an idea of how much you're gonna have you know when you finance it how much is your payment gonna be so you can look at that and be like hey you know am I going to be able to afford this am I gonna be able to realistically afford this I mentioned earlier about the e350 I'm looking for a good deal on an e350 I'll, I'll use those uh, I, I want to uh, my uh, my plan is to eventually, you know, have a couple of those vans sitting around locally and do some local work with them. Uh, whether it be something I see on the load boards, whether it's some kind of connections I make, but those are very reliable vehicles and they're good to just have on hand because they're they're cheaper. I mean, you can usually get a good decent uh, uh, E series van right in the fifteen to twenty thousand range, uh, maybe less depending on the miles on it. But those five point four engines are just monsters those things are great engines so very reliable vehicles uh, which is why that's why i look for those uh i'm also looking for a transit at the time what i'm looking for honestly is the best deal it's got to have 3.5 turbo as i said earlier but it's just got to be the right value whether it's used whether it's new uh any any of those things it doesn't matter to me i want the extended high top and that's for me personally because i don't want any any uh limitations on the freight and I want the driver, whoever's going to be in that vehicle, to have room to live as well. Because they're usually going to be on the road quite often. Hopefully that answered that question uh, somewhat or mostly. If not, in the comments section, give me a little more clear uh, question as far as what I can you know, pinpoint for you. I'm just trying to give a general idea of what I look for and whatnot as far as me personally as I'm looking for a van. Uh, just to end this... When you are shopping for a van, if you're going to go new, please understand how to work with these dealers. And again, as I said at the beginning, this is a this is a poor market. And I mentioned that I ordered a van. Right now, currently, there's no rebates on these transits. I don't. Again, I don't know about the Mercedes and whatnot, but the transits, there's no kind of rebate, so the price is what the price is, because it's just a it's a it's a seller's market at the moment. Uh, there's there's no love for the buyer at the moment. Hey, keep that in mind. Uh, if you're trying to get into this, just be smart, man. That's all I can say. Just just really know what you're doing and how you're doing it. Uh, there's plenty of videos and information out there on how to deal with dealerships when purchasing a vehicle. I'll do another video at some point as far as what 
I was you know taught how to do things as far as what I look for and, and what I'm doing when I go and deal with these dealerships now because if any of you are like me before I hated dealerships I mean I absolutely despised the salesman now I don't feel that way I still don't like them because I know they're coming at me in a thirsty kind of way but I know how to handle it now I know what you know, I know that I have the power now. You know, I understand that because it's my money. That's the biggest thing you need to realize. You, it's your money. So understand how you're going to spend it and how you're going to deal with the situation. So with the process, I should say. Not the situation, but the process. All right, guys. With that being said, I'm going to jump off here and uh, hopefully I helped you guys out. Holler.